Now that we've been introduced to power and power factor, let's go to power factor correction. If you go to section 4-5 and then look under block 11, unit 8. There's a unit there on, on power factor correction, and I want to kind of briefly go through and give you an idea of how it would be applied to our system. This is an important application to, to our system and understanding our line losses and so on. You can see now on page 3 where there's an example given to you of a particular circuit, and if you want to refer this to, uh, or maybe apply this to your system. Uh, think, of it, think of it as being from your substation to, to a, a load that is highly reactive. That, that load that's highly reactive, now uh, if, you, if it was a business place or whatever, you would uh, penalize them for, uh, for their poor power factor by charging them for their reactive load. And there's many ways this can be done. When we get into metering, I'll, I'll show you how this, how this can be done. But let's take this situation that we've got here. We've got right now a situation where we have 432 kW. And remember, watts is, is real or, or true load. Uh, an ordinary watt-hour meter would pick that up. No line losses at all there. However, with this large say, let's say this is a large uh, factory or whatever the case might be. Let's say that out here that we have 576 K VAR. And remember, VAR is, is a reactive load. A watt hour meter will not measure that unless, unless you, uh, you have phase shifting transformers. And then it'll pick up only the reactive load. So, so you can penalize them. You can bill them, if you will. Uh, either that or force them into a situation where they would supply their own capacitors to correct this reactive load. So what we've got is a situation where we've got two forms of power out here. The total in that circuit then would be calculated out by, by the right triangle or the vector method. In other words, we have so much real or true value. We have so much reactive and of course, this is a whale of a reactive load we've got out here. And the total of the two would be the hypotenuse of that right triangle. So we'll say we have 432 kW. We have 576 kVar. Now, this is reactive load in the form of uh, inductance because of where we have our vector down. We got our vector in the downward direction. If I uh, was to put in, if I could get them the exact size, if I could put in a capacitor bank that was identical to that value, then I would be installing that capacitor bank with my vector on up here and one would cancel the other. In other words, I could I could completely eliminate my reactive load. It isn't always practical to try and eliminate it, especially with, with fixed capacitors, but I could greatly uh, cut it down to where my load would not be that great. Okay, to find now what our KVA would be, see we have to use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate that out. In other words, I would know then that that my 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 P sub A, my apparent power, my K V A is going to be equal to the square root of my K W squared plus my K Vars squared. And if you go through and calculate that out, and it's been done for us in the example right there you'll see that we would have 720 then kVA. Now that's our total. Remember that power factor represents what percent of that total is true or real load. 
we know from our power factor then that, and I'm going to eliminate this out of here, we know that our power factor, our percent power factor is equal to our KW divided by our KVA times 100. And I think that's already calculated out and you'll see we'll come out with 0.6 times 100 or 60 percent. Okay. Now, of our total load, 60 percent of it is, uh, is true, which would be a poor power factor. We'd have a lot of line losses there. Our system has to be designed to handle the KVA. This is our total load on our circuit. If I go in a substation, measure across my line for my voltage, I would have my total voltage. If I would, uh, if I would clip on with an ammeter, and we'll say we've got a balanced load, if I'd clip on uh, one of my uh, circuits out of there, I would measure my current. Both of those are totals. Multiply the two. Our power formula, we know P is equal to EI. I would have my total value, or my piece of A. If I use total voltage, total current, I would have my piece of A, which would be my, my KVA of my circuit. In a substation, now there's some fancy metering out, and I'm not completely up on all that new stuff, but, but uh, there's some fancy meters out now that'll, that'll tell you just exactly whether you have leading or lagging bars. If we say we have leading bars, it's highly capacitive circuit. If we say we have lagging bars, we, we know that it's a highly reactive circuit. It's, it's highly inductive. Uh, so we go by leading or lagging bars. Uh, your fancier meters will turn around and tell you whether it's leading or lagging bars. It'll tell you what your KW is, what your KVA, uh, what your K vars is, and uh, so they are they are they are good meters. If we would if we would uh, say only be measuring what our true or real is, we would have a meter that would measure this. If we would have a meter that would measure only the reactive, if we had some very basic, simple meter, you see, we could uh, we could m we can meter either of those two. From that, we can figure out what our total is by this right triangle method. From that, we can figure out what our power factor is, and of course, here we're saying that we have a 60% power factor, which is very very low. If I want to go through and correct this, you see, now if it's if I have lagging bars, which which I've indicated in this situation, we have lagging bars, which means it's highly inductive, then I would have to add capacitors to it. And I would want to add my capacitors out close to my high reactive load, because your uh, reactance is going to be affected all the way back to the source, all the way back to the generator. So I would try and get my capacitors out as close to that high reactive load as possible. Let's take a situation. Let's say that we turn around and we do want a 100% power factor and uh, we put in a capacitor bank. Let's say that it ends up to where it's that very same size. If we would do that, we would have a situation like this. Let's say we go right out close to where a high reactive load is and we put a capacitor bank out there. Now we're dealing with currents all the way around. Our values of uh, current all the way around, uh, I think we had them here, where we had reactive current was 80 amp, and uh, our true current, uh, we have 100 amps, uh, we have 60 amps for our True current, our total was 100 amp. Now we know that 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 power is additive all the way around. Current's additive all the way around. From those units of measure of power that I had all the way around, what I could do is divide voltage into that and get current back. So if I knew my value of of uh, 
of power all the way around like I, like well, it was given to us here. Then I can take the circuit voltage, divide into that. In other words, we know from basic uh, power formula that I is equal to P divided by E. And of course, those were all units of measure of power all the way around. We had our true reactive and then our, and then our apparent or total. Uh, I could take the value of voltage into every one of those forms of power and come up with amps all the way around. Now, if I was to take that value of current back up here, I'm going to give myself a little more room here so you can see what, what I'm doing here. If we were to do that, we'd say, okay, to start with, we had, without the capacitor on there, we had 100 amp feeding, feeding this total load that we've got out here. If I put a capacitor out there that has the same value of uh, reactive load, in other words, my power in K bars, then I'm going to have 80 amps of reactive load that I'm going to compensate for. And of course, if I put my capacitor out here, it's a fixed capacitor, I have 80 amps on that particular bank, then what will happen is that, that this value of current, if I go to 100% power factor, this value of current in my circuit is going to drop down to 60 amp. Okay. From the capacitor on out towards the load, it's going to go back up to that 100 amp. So by, by correcting our reactive load out close to our source, what happens from that point all the way back? I'm canceling any reactive load that I had. So my current goes from 100 amps down to 60 amps. Well, you can see that if you cut down your value of current in your circuit, then you're going to cut down your voltage drop because you have less current in the line. The minute that capacitor comes on the line, you're dropping by 40 amp. Now that would be a whale of a whale of a load. And of course, a capacitor bank of uh, that rating, you see, you'd have to operate with oil switches and that sort of thing. So that would be a would be a tremendous load. They recommend that anything over 180 or 180 k bar and above that you use an oil switch with it because of the high high reactive load. There's one other thing that that we haven't really applied. And uh, that, that gets into, uh, into uh, some trig, is that we can calculate out, by using the trig that you learned in the first section, we can calculate out what our power factor angle is going to be. In other words, uh, a lot of times you'll hear when they say power factor angle, they'll talk the cosine of the angle. They'll say the cosine of the angle is equal to and then what you'll rem remember from trig that, that here we've got our Z and here we've got our R and we know that, uh, here's our X, we know that, uh, that the cosine of the angle is, uh, is uh, R to Z and in this case we've got uh, uh, 60 divided by 100 which is equal to, to 0.6 and uh, if I would go look up on a trig table what the cosine of 0 0.6 would be, you would see that you'd come out with 53 degrees, which would mean then that if I was to draw the sine waves, that we would show the current lagging by 53 degrees. It would come down the line about like so. Uh, that would be the difference, you see, in the two sine waves.